It's a real blessing to be with everybody tonight. Hopefully everybody has their Bibles. Can you get your Bibles and open them up uh, to Matthew 26? Okay, I'm going to read. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So I'm, not, I'm actually going to use that last verse to start off. Now, one of the questions that I want to propose to everybody tonight, every time we're on, I love it. There's so much uh, thought-provoking questions that pass straight. They go straight to my heart. And during that week, the couple weeks, you know, God will propose those questions to me uh, about going deeper with him having intimacy with him and some of the questions that have been proposed are were pretty challenging i don't know that i could answer them right away but i would like to think and know through jesus christ and my intimacy with the lord that i'm growing in those areas just like last week this week over the weekend on friday i did try practicing the rest and just trying to be blessed at my own home I was alone and just blessed to be with Jesus just resting enjoying his presence so saying that I have a question now for everyone when you don't have to answer it it's rhetorical when you think about communion one of the things that some of us may think about now if you think about this Raise your hand. How about that? Like we're in class. If you think of the cross, the blood that he shed, raise your hand. A reminder of everything that he did for us. Raise your hand. Okay. Now, how many of you think about his return? Anybody else? Okay. Well, that question I want you to keep in your thoughts as we're going through the teaching tonight. And I want to propose this question to you. Are you ready? Anybody want to put up their hand? Are you ready? If you're not fully ready, are you getting ready? Because He's coming. How many of you believe that he's coming? He's coming. And you know why we believe it? Because he said so. It's a promise. And God, we know, Abba Father, was said in the prayer, our Father keeps his promises. He keeps his word. So I just want everybody to keep that forefront are you ready with the thought that we know he's coming again now i personally myself i want to be for real and honest everybody who knows me i have never been married and it's not because i didn't want to get married i had met someone in my younger years and things didn't he actually passed away there's a little more detail with that, but I'm going to just leave that. Um, I went out with him. I met him in Bible college, 
and I really got to know him personally and we were friends and I went went out with him for a while and then he passed away. Uh, so I never had the opportunity of experiencing what marriage was like. But I have to say, how many of you believe that? I've never experienced that because I said that. But now let me tell you something. In my heart and soul, I have experienced that because he's always been with me, Jesus Christ. He's been my husband. He's been the faithful one that has kept me all these years. He's been, I even joked around with people. I joked around with Kelly and somebody else. I said, I got the best husband. Never lets me down. Doesn't give me any trouble. Loves me like no other. And that's Jesus. That's God the Father. The three in one. Covenant. Uh, that's another word tonight. Covenant. Because tonight, God really put in my heart. Now, for some of you ladies that have been married and were in covenant and are in covenant, that may be something that God is disclosing to you little by little. Because of, I want to say, the Western world that we live in, the marriage is a little bit different than of the ancient times, the original design Jewish wedding. Everybody ever read anything about the culture of the Jewish weddings, the Galilean wedding? It's a beautiful thing. So we're going to go through that tonight, and we're going to look at it, and we're going to look what is it. And I'm using the reason why I use that text, that I will not drink of the cup again until I share it with you. Again, in my father's house, father's kingdom. So now I'm going to say this. When the disciples were sitting at the table with Jesus, Jesus said this to them. Now, the disciples did not know everything. But as Jesus said to the disciples, and I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until we're in the father's house immediately because of the culture jesus spoke to them in the language and the culture the moment that he said that the disciples were thinking of a specific thing they thought wedding because of the culture and we will not share again in my father's house. We will not share this cup again until you're with me in my father's house. The ancient wedding. I'm gonna share some of the culture back in the day. Now I'm going ancient. I'm not talking about um, the 1900 Jewish weddings. I'm going back ancient because things have changed a little bit since then. You have a father of the groom and a father of the bride. And what takes place is some of the marriages, majority, were arranged by the both fathers. Sometimes the husband and the wife never met each other until the day they were going to be betrothed. Very beautiful thing. So you would think right now, well, arranged marriages, some of the arranged marriages were culture. Um, they were financial. Many different reasons. However, in this, they might have not even met each other so they could not therefore have loved one another they might have just knew each other's family they were arranged but then they would meet and i don't want to go ahead of myself but it was a very beautiful thing what was taking place and 
what would take place. I'm going to take my time because, you know, during the time uh, that I've been shut in, I don't know about some of you, I've really been taking time with the Lord a lot. And I've been reading things and I've been getting so touched in my heart uh, that all I could do is cry. How many of you have been experiencing that? Amen. And the crying uh, was not s because of sadness. Uh, I said, God, you're, you're like, I'm overwhelmed uh, because God's plan from the very beginning of time is that we would always be with them, always, that mankind, and that, that got me to thinking about Adam and Eve and wondering even when they were with God in the garden, the garments that they wore because they were married. In God's eyes, they were married, man and woman. And the garment that they wore were the glory of God. That was the veil that covered them, their nakedness. They were covered by the glory of God. And it was always God's intention that we be with him. And because of the fall, man was separated from God. Genesis 3.15 if you get an opportunity, it talks about what will take place where the serpent and the Jesus on the cross, he will crush the head of the serpent. This was the plan that God had for mankind. The fall took place and that's, this was the plan. And the plan was God's covenant. And a covenant, um, if you ask people, uh, what marriage is, which I have done this over the course of the past couple of weeks. I just came out and asked people, uh, what is, what's marriage to you? And when I heard um, what they would say, I, I want to tell you, this is what some of them said. Listen to me real close. Uh, 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 I'm serious. These are married people that love each other. Uh, marriage is when two people get together um, because they really love each other and they want to be together forever. I mean, that's a pretty good answer, don't you think? I think that's a pretty good answer. And then, but I couldn't get over how some of the people uh, that I asked that question to, they went, in the very beginning, they went, all of them went, uh, and now I asked the men, and the men, the men did the bigger, uh, the women gave me more of a being married together. Then I asked them, can you tell me what a covenant is? And some of the people were really good. They said, it's a legal contract, a binding contract that you, you have made from love uh, love for this other person, you get the marriage license, and they even told me all the logistics of all that. And I said, oh, okay. And then I myself looked up those things, and it is a legal contract made by God, and I don't want to go ahead of myself, uh, but I want to propose this to you, covenant. Think about covenant. Does everybody know what a covenant is? Yes. And the way that we know what a covenant is, is by God, because God made a covenant to us from the very beginning of time. Now, if you look, which I'm not really going to get into a lot, because if we go through all the covenants in the Old Testament and everything, God established a covenant. with Moses, with Abraham, all throughout history. And one of the things in the covenant is yes, it's a legal contract, it's binding, but it was made by God, greater than a promise, greater. And I'm sure some of you can tell me what they believe and know to be true in the covenant that they made with their spouse in marriage. Those of us who are not married, 
the covenant is what God made to us and what he did for us. So when we were going, when I was reading that passage about communion, that was the covenant, the new covenant, Jesus said, that I am establishing with you. Now with us today, this is considered salvation. Now, um, trusting in God, how many of us know him in being born again? Okay. When we are born again, we're in covenant. I'm excited. How many of you love to know that God is in covenant with us? As those of you who are married, you're in covenant with God and you're in covenant with your spouse. So getting back to the marriage again, there is what is considered after the arrangement that the father of the groom and the father of the bride, they make, thank you, Jesus. God's so good. They get together all the families of the bride and the groom. They get together. And this is called a betrothal. Anybody ever heard the term of a betrothal? I always used to think that a betrothal was kind of like being engaged. However, it is not. A betrothal is the wedding the legal contract. So the family of the bridegroom and the family of the bride, they all get together. They meet at the city gates. I was amazed by this. Out in the open, they have a canopy. For those of you who know maybe Hebrew, uh, I'm not real good. I'm actually studying Hebrew. Um, it's called a hapek. Anybody ever heard of that? And it's a canopy. They have four poles and they put it at the city gates. And when people know, now imagine this, you're in a little town. When people know there's going to be a betrothal, everybody runs to the city gates, right? They didn't have their cell phones. They didn't have phones. They didn't have any distractions. They had work. They were in their homes. And everybody was so excited. They said, there's going to be a betrothal. I'll meet you at the city gates. So everybody ran there. And at the betrothal, one of the things about the betrothal is they wanted witnesses, not guests. They wanted people to witness what was going to take place. Now, the father of the groom has a contract written on paper. Either the elder, elders, or the bridegroom's father would read it. And it would be such as all that was entailed. There would also be gifts given from the father of the groom to the bride and to the family. There would be a dowry. Now this can be a misconception. A dowry was not to buy the woman. It was to give to the father of the bride. Now in the Galilean wedding, the dowry was explained, giving monies for the dowry to purchase the bride. But if something happened to the groom, that money would take care of her. After that, they read the contract between themselves. When the contract is read, 
Can you unmute this for one minute? Everybody, okay. The contract's read. The father of the bride agrees. The contract's read. Everybody, guess what they say? I want everybody to say amen. 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 They shouted, amen. 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 The witnesses shared and they wanted the witnesses to say amen. It was an exciting time. The bridegroom would get a picture of one. Father would give it to the bridegroom and he would pour wine into a glass and the wine was not cut with water. It was strength, the full strength for ceremonial purposes. That meant it was all wine, full strength, no water involved. He would pour into a cup. Now, what does that sound like? I'm pouring it into a cup. After he takes the cup, holds it, he passes it to the bride. Now at this time, it rests in the bride's hands. She has opportunity to not accept or to accept. I'm gonna say, at this betrothal, she accept. She drinks the cup. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. A beautiful day. A wonderful day. Some of you might even remember your wedding at this. Now, as I was studying this and as I was reading, and as I was meditating on that, what a beautiful thing. So passionate. All I could think about was God the Father. Giving opportunity, covenant with us. Will we accept the covenant? Some of us, we have. When she accepted and drank of it, she became the bride. Ready. I just want everybody, just think about that and ponder that. Are we viewing ourselves as God's bride? Are we viewing ourselves as God's bride? We're his bride. Yes, we're the church. The church was referred to as the bride. Are we viewing ourselves as the bride? That covenant, the betrothal, it's symbolic. Not only was it done in the natural, but in the spiritual, it was done for us. That's what he did for us. What happens next, after this takes place, the bridegroom extends, he drinks the wine, and he says, today you're consecrated unto me. Consecrated. We're consecrated unto God because of what he has done for us what he's done for us, the covenant. After all this takes place, the bridegroom and the bride go back. The bride goes back to her home and prepares for the wedding. The bridegroom, he goes back to his father's house and he builds a room on his father's house 
Now, I never knew fully that, that the family would all live together. How many of you know that? They all live together like it was a compound. Can you, you're, you're living with your in-laws, you're living with your brothers and sisters. <laughs> I mean, Kelly, think about that. You'd be living with mama, mother-in-law, mama, all your brothers and sisters, all their wives. And they did that. They did that for safety reasons, for protection, and to be close. Now, can you imagine that? Everybody living with each other. Well, I got news. Someday, we're all going to be living together in heaven. Amen? Amen. So the bridegroom goes to his house, prepares, and he does not meet up with his bride again for a year or more. And nobody knows when he will come to get his bride. And the secret part of, might be a little different with the Galilean, I'm not sure, but they added the surprise part that nobody would know when the groom would come except for the father. Now, what does that sound like? It sounds like Jesus left the earth. He fulfilled the covenant with us, the forgiveness of sins. What he established, a covenant, a new covenant. He went back to his father's house to prepare a place for us. I mean, it's been 2,000 years now. It's, it will be a glorious place. Everybody keeping up with me? It's a beautiful meditation, thinking. All, and I pray, the God minister to me, in the hearing of what God has done for us, that he would pierce your heart at the love that he has for you as a bride and soon come in king. It's not about when is he coming, it's about why is he coming. He loves us. He's coming because he loves us and we're waiting and preparing. So during this time, the bride is getting I, I never realized it was so uh, long, a year. Can you imagine preparing for your wedding for a year? How many of you prepared it took a year for you to get married? Like you didn't get married till the next year. You got engaged, then you got married. Raise your hand if it was a year later. Longer than a year? Less than a year? Can you unmute it for a moment? Yes. Okay. Can you unmute it for one minute? Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Yvonne? Did you get engaged and then get married? Uh, well, Carl wanted to get married a lot sooner than I said yes to. But, but by the time I said yes, it was just a few more months before we Okay. Now, did you know? Uh, did you know that he was the one immediately? No, I didn't. Okay. okay. I prayed um, a lot. <laughs> how about Janet? Janet answered five months. Janet. Um, Mom, you have to I unmute. Uh, okay. Did you immediately Janet answered five months? That was me. Yeah. Were, were, did you know immediately? I knew for years. <laughs> Okay. We got engaged on Easter and we're married by August. So. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Okay. We had uh, our parents' permission on both sides, so that was good. Praise God. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And it's a beautiful thing. This marriage, the betrothal, is a year. 
it would take a year or longer. So they would be preparing, the husband would be preparing a place for the bride, building, getting furniture, getting food, preparing his heart. He was excited. The bride would be buying material. Now, a, the little town that they probably lived in, they would get cloth from all over. Can you imagine that? I know some of us who have gotten married, you made preparation, you got your gown. Well, they actually made the gown. And it would, what would be involved was cl clothing, jewelry. I can't even imagine. I can't figure all that out. Nevertheless, it took a year. So beautiful. And if anybody, as I'm talking, if you want to add something that you know in a comment, please, please feel free. I would encourage that so that we can encourage others in this. So beautiful. So during the time, I said that it takes a year. During this time that they were waiting, they were already married. Now, in the story of Mary and Joseph, during the time that they were betrothed, Mary conceived, she got pregnant during the betrothal. I often wondered, which I'm sure everyone might understand this now, I often wondered why why was he going to divorce her? They weren't even married yet. And that's when I found out the betrothal. So Mary gets pregnant and Joseph is going to divorce her during, because they were married. And then we know the story. God came and revealed. But amongst the betrothal, if anything took place, and I'm saying this for a purpose, if anything took place during that time, it would be shameful. And in the case of Mary, it was shameful. During that time of the betrothal, the female would also wear a veil over her face. That would mean that she was taken. You know, in America, people wear engagement rings. And that means you're engaged, you belong to somebody. Now think about that. You wear a veil over your face. God has us covered. We belong to God. We belong to God. We have his glory as a bride. The light shines through. During this time of the betrothal, Joseph, we know that Joseph did not divorce Mary. We know that because of everything that transpired. But it was a very precious time for the female and the male both to be pure. After the female is at her home, she has her dress ready. She's waiting. Her bridesmaids are all waiting. And listen to this. Now, the virgins, the 10 virgins. Everybody understand the concept of the 10 virgins? I don't want to go ahead of myself. You ever want to share something and you're, you got it, you're so excited. I want to keep on track. I'm just so excited. After the year, the bride has her dress done. The bridesmaids are with her in her home, and they're waiting now. Now, this is after a year. They're waiting. They have their lamps trimmed. Yes, the parable of the ten virgins. Thank you, Matthew 25. They have their lamps, and they have oil with their lamps. Because even though the, they know that the bridegroom is coming, they do not know the specific day 
or the hour. They don't know. So it's a surprise. They know he's coming. So they're prepared. They're dressed. And they would literally be in the bride chamber. This is where they would be. The bridesmaids, they would fall asleep. <laughs> I'm wondering, how long was she staying in her dress? <laughs> right? Here they are. They're, she's waiting for the bridegroom. The bridegroom is with his men in his house, and he has everything ready. He's got the meal ready, tells the father, Father, everything's ready. The father inspects everything. Now, Revelation, God is inspecting everything with the son. The father is inspecting the bridegroom. Everything's ready. The food, the preparations, the home is built. And he goes to his father. Everything's ready. Father inspects. And the father says, let's wait. I'll tell you when. Scripture says that no man knows the hour or the day when Jesus will return. Only the Father. Only the Father knows. I know that. We may not understand that. How could Jesus not know? Well, it says it right in Scripture. Only the Father. For a purpose. So the bridegrooms wait in expectation. Eventually, we know the father says, now, go get your bride. Now, this is an exciting time. And it, who knows when it might be. It might be at midnight. The bride is sleeping. Let's just say that. The bride's sleeping with the bridesmaid. The bridegroom, the brides, the, the men, the best men, they're all excited. They're jumping. They're singing. And it also says a shout. They come out of the house, the father's house. They're on the road. Now imagine this, because we have imaginations to imagine. This is the father, God. In the natural, it's the father of the bridegroom. But in the spiritual, it's God the father. God the father is waiting to send Jesus but he's coming back for us. We don't know. And I have to say this, during this time, the bride was preparing. How many of you are preparing? How many of you have been preparing? Just raise a hand. How many of you have been preparing for the bridegroom? If you're not, guess what? See this time, all that's going on, this is all preparation for us to press in, to draw close to God, to hear him for yourself, to know, to know, to know he's returning. He's returning. God wants us not to faint, not to lose heart, just because it's been, we have not lived 2,000 years. We've lived, I've lived 63 years. Some may be younger, some may be older. In between, are we preparing? Are we preparing? I'm preparing. Through the city streets, he's going for his bride. Anybody ever heard of the shofar? The shofar. Revelation. Thessalonians. And the trump will sound a loud trump, a trump. It says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those who remain shall be changed in Thessalonians in the twinkling of an eye. And ever will we be with the Father forever and ever and ever. That will be our dwelling place forever and ever and ever. The bridegroom in the natural is going through the streets. And I never knew even the blowing of the shofar. I never knew that. It wakes up the whole town. And this is what they said. 
the wedding feast is on. Whether it's midnight, whether it's midday, the people in the town, they hear it. All those who are invited. Now listen to that word, invited. They hear, they get up, they're excited because they're going now to the wedding feast. They know there's gonna be a feast, a wedding feast. They're excited, they're woken up, they're excited. There's, the wedding's on. People get their lamps because it's dark out. They get their lamps, they're excited. They got their oil with their lamps, walking. They're alongside the bridegroom. The bride is waiting. She hears the trump that she's been waiting for. And we're talking waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, when you're waiting for your love to come for you. Now, this is a wedding. When you're waiting for your love to come, things can happen. When we're waiting for the Lord to come, things can take place. That's something for us to think about. In the waiting, all I can think of, Isaiah, listen, Isaiah 40, 31. And those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not become weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Paul said it, I press on. How many of you are pressing on? Pressing on to win the prize of the calling. That's what he's talking about. The race, I'm running the race. Are we running this race? To receive, are we running the race? In covenant with the Father. Are we in covenant with him? I pray God will touch your hearts at this time and strengthen you in this. The bride and groom, after a long year and a couple days, they see each other. It was like they were never apart. They gaze eyes. When we see him, we're gonna be just like him. We're gonna know. We're not gonna have any questions. We're just gonna know that we're home. Home with the father. The bride sees the groom. Now this is something else I did not know. I did not know that they build something that they can sit on, the bride and the groom. Made out of wood, and the bride is carried on this. Now, listen, the wording of it is, they lift her up. Now, think about that. Thessalonians that does not say rapture. It says, caught up, caught up. How many of you believe that we're going to be caught up in the rapture? How many of you believe that? Yes, that's what the word says. We're going to be caught up with him. They lift the bride up and they carry her to the feast. All the guests. are given white linen. Especially if someone was rich, they would wear white linen. That would mean that they were invited to the wedding feast. Once whoever was invited went through the doors to the wedding feast, 
the doors were shut. Nobody went in, nobody came out. They celebrated eating, drinking. Now think about this. Some of you who know, seven days. Seven days. Think about that. I mean, right? I know some of you already know. Seven days. People say seven days completion. The representation is we're going to be with him. The wedding feast, when we're with him in the wedding feast, that will be the bride celebrating with Jesus. If you want to call it metaphoric, this is what God intended from the very beginning. That we would be in covenant with him. When the doors shut, it says in Matthew, there will be gnashing of teeth. There will be, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name. And he will say, I never knew you. We know that some of us who know him are going to be with him. We know from living on the earth, there are people that are not going to be with him. We know that. To me, in my heart, when I think of that, and I know God, I know it should be sad. We should feel the burden. Now, people not knowing God. The wedding feast has begun for the bride and the groom. The wedding feast for us has not taken place yet. Has not. We are in the process of being a bride and we are waiting. You know, that those words of communion and the scripture, to me, it will never be the same. What will be always carved out in my heart will be God. The sacrifice that he gave for us. That was Jesus Christ to make a way by shedding his blood, by beating his flesh, by the cross, the suffering, the beatings, the resurrection. The life that he lived on the earth, the cup that he took, the cup that he took, being separated from God. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He took that wrath upon himself that we would not have to experience that. The life he lived. The way he made for us in covenant, as a relationship, through salvation, to be lived down through consecration, holiness, holiness, cleansing by the blood, forgiveness of sins, the covenant relationship. Do you know for the past seven years, that God has been, I say seven years because it's at the end of it. The scripture that stands out to me that God has given me revelation and I hold on to. God's promise to all of us. I will never leave you or forsake you. Now I want to speak the truth. If we're married, and Yvonne, you know this. Our spouse may not be with us. Right? But guess who remains with us? The faithful father. He's the bridegroom. He's the common king. Friends will let us down. Husbands, wives will disappoint us. They are not perfect. People in marriage, you know already if you've been married for a while. And I want to say, if anyone's been divorced, 
I want to say this, radiant. God views you as radiant in forgiveness. Radiant. You're his bride. God knows. Those who are married in contract with their beloved, they know they're not perfect. They know that. God must be the center. He must be all. He must meet all of your needs. And then your spouses are just a blessing. They're blessings to you, gifts that God has given you on the earth. I have not experienced that, but I have experienced the fellowship with my sisters and my brothers. God has given us family. Do you know when a bride and groom in the natural, when they would get married, they were related. They became brother and sister, not in an incestuous way. They were related both spiritually and physically. They were related. Jesus, somebody came to him. They said, your mothers and your brothers are outside. He said, who are my mothers and brothers? Jesus said, those who do the will of the Father. The bridegroom, we're the bride. Are we preparing ourselves? Are we preparing ourselves? Are we being filled with the word of God? Are we living it out? If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Are we in covenant in the death life, dying to ourselves? We are to reckon ourselves dead to sin. Are we living as disciples? Are we living? Many questions. If we aren't, press in. Consider this warnings. Consider this is the time. Not just to wake up, but to know we're at the brink of the soon coming bridegroom in preparation. He's coming soon. He is. We want to be found. Fill of the oil of the Holy Spirit. We want to be found in him fully, not wanting to get oil when we think tomorrow he's coming. We must keep hypocrisy out. All hypocrisy. We must press in. Let this be a time. Repentance. Let this be a time of repentance. Where God is convicting us internally. We're not talking about outward works. We're talking about circumcision of our hearts. Deeply consecrated unto the bridegroom. A lot of thought provoking. May God bring conviction into your heart to deeply follow him, deeply, to surrender greater, to yield to the promptings of his small, still voice that we hear saying, go this way. We have no church building to go to right now because we are the church. We are the bride. We are. And God is preparing us. He's causing our hearts not to be alarmed, not to be fearful, but to fear him in the name of Jesus. I want you to just lift up your hands tonight. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, I know these ladies that are on here, Lord, I know them. I know them in the spirit. You know them in the spirit, Lord. I pray tonight that you will fill them. Fill them, fill them, fill them. So they're overflowing. So they're overflowing. 
with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Unspeakable, full of glory, full of the spirit, full of the life, full of Zoe life, abundant life. May it penetrate into their heart of hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. May you reign and rule in their hearts as they surrender, as I surrender to you deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper. In the name of Jesus, we surrender. We surrender. We cleanse ourselves, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. Praise your name. We lift you up, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, get us ready, Lord. Prepare us, Lord, to receive. Receive tonight, God, communion. But to receive what you have for us, Lord, in a deeper way. Revelation of what you have for us. Reveal to each woman. Reveal deeper and deeper the work that you have done. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. John the Baptist said, bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Jesus, do a work. Do a work. Do a work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I have a request, a special request tonight. Lord, I pray, my sister Yvonne, hallelujah, I would like you to pray. Read the scriptures from the communion tonight when we do it. Would you please do that for me? Hallelujah. As we receive communion tonight, I pray that you would read the scriptures and would you lead us, please? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you feel led of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Is that okay, Kelly? Is that good? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My sister Yvonne. Hallelujah. God's, God's just, I just want to speak something to you. You know, all of us, but you especially. I know you know. Um, you know, just that, you know, you're waiting for the bridegroom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, Jesus, hallelujah with expectancy. Hallelujah. May we all wait in expectancy for the bridegroom. Mm, Jesus, hallelujah. And Jennifer, I want to tell you something. Hallelujah. God sees the work that you're doing. In humility, humility. You got to love and you're humble. God is working through you. Serious work. God is doing through you into the brethren, into the people. God's doing a work. As you pray and intercede, he's touching people. He's touching. He's touching. He sees the cries. He sees what you're praying for. He sees. He sees. You got his heart. You know, he sees. Be blessed in knowing that. Be blessed. He sees. He knows. He knows. Thank you, Jesus. The labor is not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. Blessings over you and your husband during this season. Blessings, blessings, blessings poured out. The Spirit, may He fill you. 
May he fill you to your overflowing rivers of living water. May they flow from you onto the people that God has given you. You do not take it lightly. You don't take it lightly. I know you don't. You're consecrated unto God. You're making disciples of Jesus Christ. That's your heart, you and your husband's heart. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Some of us are not going to look at marriage the same way now. Hallelujah. 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 And your bride. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Oh God, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after eight, Jesus took the bread. And more than likely, he would have blessed it in Hebrew, and it sounds a little bit like this. And blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. Bread in Hebrew is lechem, and house of bread is bet. Bethlehem, Bethlehem, which is where the bread of life came from. And so, Holy One, we thank you for your body that was broken for us. We do not take that sacrifice lightly. Thank you for the covenant that you've made with us. And thank you that you have not left us here as orphans, that you've covenanted with us, and that you will return. And until you return and we eat this with you, we lift it up and remember. We remember in our minds, but you remember and put us together, remembering us through this bread. And so we bless you, O oh God, King of the universe. Thank you for your body broken for us. This is my body, eat it. Then taking the cup of wine, he entered into covenant with them saying, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Bari hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. And this is when Jesus said, This is my blood. Each of you must drink it in fulfillment of the covenant. For this is the blood that seals the new covenant, and it will be poured out for many for the complete forgiveness of sins. Though he will not drink it with us until he returns, he gives it to us to take 
and to remember what a sacrifice, what great love the Father has poured out before us that we might have this amazing, secure covenant and a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. And so we drink in remembrance, oh God, until we hear the sound that the bridegroom cometh. And we listen for that sound, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your sacrifice, for such great love, unfathomable love. And so we drink this in remembrance until the next time that we get to drink it. But every time we drink it, we just say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, that we went, we are the bride. We say yes to your promises. We say yes to you, oh God. <clears throat> Interesting enough, Kathy, this week <clears throat> I was reading um, the story of the um, the men to Emmaus. I, it's one of my favorite favorite encounters, and uh, I, I saw some new things out of it, but. All those disciples that were walking on that road, they, they had been with Jesus. They had, they had lifted up the cup. They lifted up the bread. They, they heard him uh, say the prayers. They knew the tonality of, of the voice. And yet, in all their confusion, and the, the crucifixion and the resurrection, I mean, they're, they're walking on the road and they're so preoccupied with all these thoughts. And Jesus is walking right next to him, you know, and he's saying like, you know, what's happening? You know, why are you so preoccupied? And so for those of you that remember the story, the, the bottom line is they, they go to the next village and Jesus is just gonna go on. He's explained everything he's unveiled himself through the scriptures to them from oh, Moses through the I, prophets. And so they go to this next. Sorry, there's like a fuzziness. I don't know if it's, your phone is I don't know. maybe it's your bible okay i think that's better i'm sorry I'm <laughs> my bible around. okay um, <laughs> goes on to, you know he's he pretends or he, his intention is to go on uh but they invite him to stay and the scripture says they plead with him to stay for the night and so even with all the revelation they had until they asked him to abide, until they asked him to stay, they didn't recognize and, the, and they recognized him when he broke Amen. the bread. Amen. Amen. Broke the bread and he did, he did the blessing. And all of a sudden, they realized. <laughs> their midst. But with the knowledge of the revelation of Moses and the prophets, it didn't happen until they invited him yes, to say men. Yes. Stay. And you, Jesus. Then they were serious about yeah. him being abiding with him, staying with yeah. him, connecting with yeah. him, being in relationship with him. Yes. Then he broke the bread and their eyes were open and the scripture says, and then he vanished. He was yeah. out there. Yes. Hallelujah. And so good. Thought I'd that tonight. Thank you. So beautiful. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Well, we have five minutes left. So I don't know, Kathy, if you have thoughts for those last five minutes. So. Thoughts? Yes. Or any any way you want to close. Um, I wanted to hear that song. Can you play that song? Yes, I have it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whew, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for in revelation. You're my 
So beautiful.